gonna kiss me a few Man, those guys, they don't know what they're missing I got a lot of living to do And I want to welcome Lucy Arnaz. Needs no introduction, really. Shouldn't need any introduction. But she's going to be at the Irvine Barclay Theater coming up later this month with a new show, I Got the Job, Songs from My Musical Past. Welcome to this day. Thank you very much for having me. So tell me a little bit about, I guess, what was your first recollection maybe of, of, of being in TV, theater, the business at all? What was your very, very first job? Very, very first job was on my mother's show. My mother, Lucille Ball, wow. had a, a show uh, called the, the Lucy Show in between the I Love Lucy and the Here's Lucy Here's Show. Here's Lucy, right. Yeah, and, and um, she knew that I liked making believe and jumping up on little tables and putting on shows in my backyard and whatnot. And she saw this kid sort of leaning towards performing, I guess. And so she had an opening for a simple little two line part on her show. I was a soda jerk, you know, like somebody works in a soda okay, sure. place and carries soda stuff. And I literally, I was 11 and I had, yes. my hair was long and I pulled it back in a ponytail and I had these little chopped off bangs. I looked 10 and I thought, I looked 16, you know, yeah, but I, know I did you were that. A woman. <laughs> I was, a, yes, I did my part very well. They slid those sodas all the way down the counter and I caught them and put them on the tray like a pro. So that was my first job. And, it, and I got a couple more of those little pretend I'm a friend of her daughter, people, Cynthia was okay. my name for years and then i picked a high school that had a great musical theater department and my mm -hmm. mother saw me constantly you know going out for the plays and the musicals and stuff so when she changed to her next series the here's lucy series mm -hmm. she invited my brother and i to play the children on that show and then that first i said no because i had a plan i wanted to go to northwestern or some great theater college right. and and get a degree and i didn't want that to to mess that up. Okay. But did <laughs> Most you also people go to Northwestern and then they try to get on a television series. Did you at that even... age though, did you have the sense that maybe you wanted to be your own person? Hey, I want to come out from this shadow because that's a big shadow. Right? Exactly. Well, that's basically why I wanted to make sure that I had the goods. I wanted to make sure I was trained mm -hmm. before people made fun of me or said, you only got that job because right, whatever. Right, right. But my mother sort of convinced me that this would be good training. Mm -hmm. And I made a pact. I made a pact with her. I said, listen, if you do this and I give it my all and after the first few you know, episodes, you realize that I'm not cutting it and you will know, even though you're in water, you <laughs> will know obvious. you're smart, you know. <laughs> and if you see that, uh-oh, uh-oh, she's not ready, then please, I beg of you, write me out. Say that you sent me off to college or something and then let me go, really, to college. and Boarding get school, troubled child, whatever. Yes, let me let is. me get better at this. <laughs> and she agreed. She said, no, I get, I hear what you're saying. I understand. And and I, I promise we will do that. So I got a little better with each episode and it was good training. And P.S. I never went to college and I did those shows and then I did summer stock and regional theater and Broadway and da 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 da, da and there I was. There and uh, so it when was. When did you know? When did you say to yourself, um, this is just for me? I, I Was it that very first acting job? I think I knew long, I think I knew like even before I did that, that I, that's what was fun for me. And if gosh, wouldn't it be great if I could actually make my living doing this. Mm -hmm. I just love doing it. And I love make believe in characters and I love music and I just want to do this forever. And won't I be lucky if I can? I never forget that to this day, how lucky I am to be able to be doing something that I dreamt about not becoming a star. See, that's the difference. A lot of people are wherever they are in the Midwest or New York, and they dream of becoming famous someday, being a star and they go about it in whatever ways they do this through music or TV or movies or whatever. I, I was related to people who were really big stars and I didn't see that there was anything fabulous about that. Right. No, you know, they I, couldn't eat a meal without being interrupted. They could never go to the market. They could right. hey, horrible. Real quick. Oh, can I just real quick? I interrupted yeah. your dinner, but can I really? Yeah. Yeah. And I, I said, that, I think not... some people get, some people get trapped in that idea that 
I have to be a star or otherwise I'm somehow not successful. And there are so many people that in this industry that you're in that have had wonderful careers, they've enjoyed their entire mm -hmm. life and no one knows them, but they, it's, there's yeah. still fulfillment. You don't have to be a star to have that fulfillment. Did you find that at some point saying, I am, I'm in, this is what I love. I love what I'm doing. Yeah. Absolutely. Every single day. I've never wanted that. And when it got close to that, you know, I was like, oh God, here comes the bad part. Um, <laughs> Really? And that's so it's kind of I've never been ambitious because of that. I've well, sort of pulled away from all the things you're supposed to do in order to get that vibe going. You know, I God, every time I see somebody like J-Lo comes to mind, right. you can't get out of a car without <laughs> 82 people taking a picture of you. Who wants that life? Right. I don't. So anyway, I wanted to do what I loved doing and doing the work was what was important to me. And mm -hmm. as long as I had the work, I was happy as a clam. And I've been lucky. I've, you know, I'm in my early seventies now and I've never stopped working. So I'm glad I chose to do what I did and I did it the way that I did it. And right. this show is basically about that. So Right. Yeah. And so it kind of goes through the whole trajectory of that. Right. And your theater yeah. and yeah. You've film, the jazz, obviously the one of the most famous ones of the jazz singer with Neil Diamond, you know, when you're one of your more famous uh, films and your TV career and, and all of these things. Right. And so it kind of you kind of walk folks through the whole thing. There's I'm, I'm guessing there's some tunes as well. I well, no, this is called I Got the Jobs songs from my musical past. Okay. So it's everything that had to do with putting me in front of people on a stage in doing something has to do with musicals, mm -hmm. right? Whether it was in my high school or it was the first few shows that I did that were national tours, whatever, and then Broadway and all the shows that came after that and stories about working with some of the amazing people that I was lucky enough to work with, most of them, you know, aren't with us anymore. But when I look back on all the years I've been doing this, over 35 years of just doing concerts, and I've been in the business for almost 50 years. Wow. Then when I work, look back at the theater work that I did, I was in, really astounded at, at the amount of uh, amazing composers that whose shows I was in. And a wow. lot of them whose work I actually got to do and, and, and work with them. The Marvin Hamishes, the Irving Berlins, the, you know, Julie Stein, Cy Coleman, Dorothy wow. Fields, Michael Bennett, Tommy Toon. Um, they're, they're just, you know, Mike Nichols. I was really lucky. And so I have a little, you know, closet full of stories and a lot of great music because of those shows. And it made for a very entertaining, I think, intimate and very authentic show for me probably the most authentic mm -hmm. cabaret concert type of thing that i've put together right. so far now um you know a lot of people can have a theater career without never having to sing a tune which is good for some but and your mother famously couldn't sing her character couldn't sing on television which we know that was just a farce but when did you start singing in terms of your career did you have to go through training did you start very early in your musical career a little bit of both. I had some mild training when I was very young. My mother let me work out with uh, one of the musical directors that was on her show, just to kind of give me some basics. And then I studied in school, in high school. And then I started to work with various vocal coaches throughout the years. Um, but I learned a lot just by doing, you know, like when I was on the Here's Lucy show, I was pretty young. I was mm -hmm. 15 when I started. And and they would say, uh, next week, you're going to sing a duet with Carol Burnett. And I was like, what? You know, and, <laughs> and I would have to go train with the accompanist and then learn the music, go to the pre-record, work with Carol. You just, you're doing it. You're not thinking about, can you do it? You're just, yeah. you're doing it. This you know? is what's happening next. <laughs> when I was doing musicals in high school, my mother knew that she wasn't going to have the writers write me a scene where I had to sing with somebody unless the gal can sing. If I could sing, you know, clearly I, I could carry a tune. Mm. There's a big difference between what I did then and trying to be on Broadway and singing eight shows a week or, or for maybe all summer long, for example, outdoors in New York when I was doing Annie Get Your Gun at Jones Beach outdoors is hard because it's right. the weather and you know it's sometimes really cold or or there a moth will fly in your mouth you know? <laughs> and uh, and you do it every single night and you're singing in ethel merman's cave and so all of that was great training you know and every time i had a challenge like that it made me stronger it had to oh how do i learn how to do this what do i have to do now you know 
Would you say um, of all the things you've done, is, is theater really your, your kind of your first love or, or your, your favorite of all? Yes, absolutely. It's a high wire act every single time. Mm -hmm. Curtain goes up, it's just you. Mm -hmm. And you've worked, you've done your rehearsals, you've done your previews, you know, whatever. But now those guys are gone. Curtain is up and it's you in the audience. And that is right. thrilling every single time. All right, so you're going to be at the Irvine Barkley and doing the thing you say is your favorite thing to do. So tell us about a little bit more about the show before we wrap up here, just about you know what what you're going to be taking us through. It's a it's a mini retrospective, as I say in the show, of my life within the musical theater community and the things that I've done uh, that led me to where I am right now. I think that I got inspired to be a musical person, maybe because my father was in music and he conducted sure. a band and he was a terrific singer and made records, right? And I had a lot of music to listen to growing up. So I always appreciated music. I always identified with the emotions that a music can bring out of you. And uh, I gravitated more towards music, <clears throat> maybe than my, my mother did towards acting, television, film, oh. whatever. And, uh, and as soon as I could, I started to get jobs in some sort of little musical production somewhere, either, you know, in my backyard before I even went to high school, <laughs> creating them myself, uh, or going to high school, or then, you know, regional theater, summer stock. And the wonderful parts that I was able to get at that time, and the people that I met, and stories about them, and what it was like to have to go through those years. And there's music from all the greats in this show, the Gershwins, as I said, Berlin, Cy Coleman, you know, Julie Stein. Uh, it's it's a very eclectic show about the musical theater and me. There you go. And it's Lucy Arnaz. It's going to be Saturday, January 27th, 8 p.m. at the Irvine Barclay Theater. I believe tickets, you can still probably get some at thebarclay.org. Lucy Arnest, thank you so much for joining us on this day. It's my pleasure. I hope to see you all there one night only. Oh, there, there you go. We've, we've had warning. Thank you so much. There's such okay. a lot of living to do. Oh, they're playing my song. Yeah, they're playing my song. And when they're playing my song, everybody's got to shh, shh, shh. The magic of